All right, ready to go, I think. So the topic of our demo is uh, quite a lot different than the previous uh, demos that we did in the last few community hours. Those have been mostly focused on big integrations with other tools that uh, we at Zenimal developed. And this time we're sort of going a little bit back to the basics or our pipelines and steps, uh, the interface of that, which sort of is the backbone of all those integrations. So Zenimal integrations usually are part of a pipeline or allow you to run a step in a pipeline in a predefined way. And these pipelines and steps are sort of one of the core features of Zenimal. And we had uh, quite a few iterations on that and decided to come up with like a really simple language for pipelines and steps. I will go into more detail uh, pretty soon that allow like even beginners to define quite flexible pipelines with just a few keywords. And this is coming from the opinion that a lot of the other tools out there, like orchestrators, like Duplo pipelines, for example, or Airflow, are often quite complicated to write and uh, some data scientists not particularly uh, fond of engineering for example, uh, might get really uh, confused or is just not able to write, write their code uh, quickly with Kubeflow pipelines. And Zenimal uh, aims to, to solve that by providing an abstract language above different orchestrators, which uh, is, in my opinion, quite intuitive and easy to use. So let's start with a pipeline. Um, this is simply a Python function which defines the connections between different steps. So we can see here that we have a data loader step, which gives us two outputs and the data validator step uh, is connected to the output of the data loader and so on. So the, the pipeline essentially connects the steps into a, a graph of uh, steps which get executed when, when you run the pipeline. And the other component of that is a step. And similar to pipelines, a step is simply a Python function written in which you can do essentially whatever you want. This could be your existing code or new code. And you decorate this function with a step decorator from Xenomel. And at the core, this is really the most basic thing you can do with those two concepts. There's no need to add anything on top of that to run simple pipelines. So it really requires just a step decorator uh, around your functions that do stuff related to your Xenomel uh, pipelines or machine learning pipelines. And similar thing for a pipeline, a decorated function which connects these steps. So then let me also welcome the new joiners. We're in the middle of the demo about pipelines and steps and just explain those concepts, but feel free to ask if you have any other questions. So these pipelines in Zenimal are like one of the main benefits of them, I think as well, is that they sort of trick you into enforcing best practices, like making sure your steps have clearly defined inputs and outputs of, of some type and in general, make you also think about how to write your code in a robust way, split it into steps, which make semantic sense uh, and lots of other things that you gain just by writing code in this structure. And the huge upside is you don't have to write uh, orchestrator specific code anymore. So Zenimal abstracts away different orchestrators and will then take care of converting this uh, these steps and pipelines that you define in Zenimal to a language that the underlying orchestrator can understand. And that's often where the complicated stuff happens. You need to have knowledge of Kubernetes, for example, to make Kubeflow pipelines work, uh, but that is all abstracted away and makes it much easier to, to get started writing pipelines. So we're gonna run a pipeline very soon. Uh, I've already shown the general structure of that pipeline. It's, it's of one of our examples 
deep checks, which is uh, an integration focused on data validation, as you can also see from a lot of the steps in this pipeline. Uh, there's the data gets validated, the model gets validated, and drift is also detected in this pipeline. And we are simply going to run that as a first step locally. And to do so, uh, there really is nothing else that we have to do other than defining it and running a Python function. Now, this should be pretty quick. So as you can see, it loads some data. It uses deep checks to do data validation, trains a model, and then also detects drift and detects drift on the model outputs and stuff. So that is a simple local debugging run with our Zenimal local orchestrator. And now we'll get to the interesting stuff, which was also hinted at in the initial um, poll, which is how would we switch to a different environment now? Uh, this is quite a pain point for a lot of people. And using this abstraction of pipelines and steps in ZenML, we can simply switch out the stack with a different orchestrator and the same pipeline code runs anywhere you want it to run. So let me just show you the stacks that I've pre-configured for this, for this demo. So we've used so far the local stack, which just contains local components as well as the deep checks val validator. And we're now also gonna run it on a Qflow uh, cluster, Qflow pipelines running on AWS with a fully remote stack. So from Secret Manager and all the other components, everything is hosted in AWS. And as a different uh, orchestrator and also different cloud provider, uh, we're gonna run the same thing on a Vertex stack. Uh, I will get to that quite soon. Uh, there's just one more thing I want to highlight here which is a new feature in the latest release uh, related also to this sort of shared language of, of steps and pipelines, and that is the resource configuration. So we've added a new class uh, which allows you to specify certain resources for, for a step. Uh, let me just write something quickly here. So we could, for example, require that our trainer step uh, requires lots of CPU to run, so we might just assign it two entire CPU cores running on the node in, in the cloud. And let's say it needs a lot of caching. Let's also give it like eight gigabytes of memory. And this again, I can maybe if I switch my presentation to something else. Well, let me quickly do that. We're gonna have... I'm going to show you an example of how something similar than defining a step or assigning resources would be done in, in one of the underlying orchestrators that ZNML uh, hides from the user, essentially. And that would be uh, one way of defining such a step in, in Kubeflow, for example would be to actually write like a Kubernetes. I'm not an expert. I'm not even sure how these files are called, but like a specification of a pod in Kubernetes uh, in which you'd have to know the YAML syntax of all of this to write uh, or specify your container image. You would need to, in a separate step, uh, build this container image locally um, to include all your requirements you need to pass in the parameters to a Python script. So this is far more complicated. Um, and on top of that, even like if you would want to uh, have like a specific amount of memory or CPUs or GPUs, whatever, uh, on the machine that your step is running on, you could extend this YAML file, for example, uh, to again with Kubernetes specific language, specify some resources that this is running on. And uh, now I'm just going to switch back to my Visual Studio so we can again see how simple ZML makes this entire thing by letting you specify this in code. Oops. 
still waiting. By letting you just specify this here, and we internally convert this to whatever is necessary for Kubeflow to understand that this is what you wanted it to run on. So now let me switch to the AWS Kubeflow stack. And that is also all we have to do to run the same pipeline again. Um, so if I restart this Python process, this might take a little longer now as this, uh, as we can also see in the logs here, builds a Docker image, um, installs requirements, everything your pipeline needs to run, then it will push this Docker image and then tell Kubeflow to pull this image to run the steps. All right, that was actually quite quick. Uh, we've ran this before, obviously, to make sure the Docker building is, is cached. Um, before I switch back to my browser to maybe show you this in the UI as well, uh, I'm going to switch stacks again and trigger the same thing on Vertex, which is, again, just one command away. And we're going to run it. And once that one has finished, I will then switch to Chrome again to show you how these pipelines are running. And we can also take a look at or well, make sure that our trainer step on which we defined the CPU and memory requirements actually run on, on those specific machines. Uh, and that is this is actually like working as intended. All right, that was it. And I'm going to switch to Chrome. One second. All right. So here we are refreshing. Okay, I'm guessing. Yes, the the pipeline on on AWS Kubeflow has already finished. As we can see here, all the steps are in. And if we take a look at, for example, the mm. pod description. So this is what Zenimal generates for you. Um, we can probably somewhere down here also find something yes exactly it requires certain cpus wait am i on the wrong is this ah down here sorry i was looking at the wrong thing but here are the resources that we specified so we want to run with two CPU cores and eight gigabytes of memory. And on Vertex, similar thing, our pipeline here, it just started with the first step. Once that one is finished, uh, the trainer will start. And we could also take a look at the machine that is running on to see what resources are available. Uh, but you can also just trust me, uh, it works. So I'm going to just open it up to any questions or any feedback uh, that anyone might have. And we can skip the vertex one. Right. I'll also stop recording now. <laughs>